Hell. Let's talk to Conservative commentator Connor Tomlinson. Good evening, Connor. Evening, uh, Kevin. I appreciate the opportunity, as always, to avoid washing Love Island. <laughs> I hope you wouldn't be washing it if I didn't get in touch with you. Um, listen, uh, on a serious note, uh, we all obsess in this country, and there's a reason to do so, about the, uh, the migrants coming across the channel. Uh, they uh, they make the news all the time. They get in the papers. Nigel Farage goes out to meet them and takes a dramatic film. Uh, and it is a big problem. They immediately arrive here. They claim asylum uh, and we let them stay. Turns out uh, that vastly huge, larger numbers of migrants, illegal migrants, if you like, are getting into this country uh, by air. That people smugglers don't just offer dinghies. Uh, they offer... Uh, wannabe migrants, people who want to come to this country, passports, uh, fake passports, air tickets uh, to get into this country by air and then they get in and then they claim asylum. Uh, so uh, they are being charged 10,000 euros. Uh, this is a, a huge problem that doesn't get written about, doesn't get talked about. Uh, we need to address it, don't we? Definitely. A lot of the focus, obviously, in the last couple of years has been on the dinghy crossings, mainly because it's quite laughable how you can float across the channel in a rubber duck and get far more benefits than a business owner under a lockdown. Uh, I believe, though, recently there's been as many as 7,500 migrants that have been stopped from even making the crossings with joint ventures between uh, the English and French. Now, of course, that's a significantly lower number than the eight or 9,000 that have already made the crossings this year, but it does mean that we're starting to tackle some of the stuff. And so the people smugglers have got to get a bit creative. And so now they're charging exorbitant amounts of money for fake documents, uh, as where before we saw when they made the uh, falsified crossings, you saw migrants chucking the documents into the city so that they could just disappear to the asylum system. Uh, lots of those were from Iran and uh, Iraq, by the way. So the whole Syrian refugee narrative that was spun wasn't quite true. Obviously, our heart goes out to people that are in serious conflict, but unfortunately, there are a lot of chances and adventurers that are making their way over and the majority are not women and children they are uh, working age men so the fact that we're tackling attempting to at least to very fixy the channel crossing dilemma because it's made a lot of headlines means that those those measures are now getting circumnavigated and essentially uh, i think they're taking a leaf out of a, a lot of people's books of trying to go on holiday and dodge the the terrible amber and red lists of just <laughs> ping-ponging between countries yeah, why, why do we reward uh, these lawbreakers? That's what they're doing. They're breaking our laws. They are illegally entering this country using fake documents, or as you just said, no documents at all, because they've thrown them into the English Channel. But these ones who are coming in by air, uh, they've got fake passports. Uh, they are flown into places like Vienna, stop off points points in Europe and then on to British airports uh, and then of course they claim uh, they're discovered to be uh, travelling on false documents I mean I, I assume some of them get through, you never know, I assume some make it through and disappear into British society but others get caught, however of course uh, we then offer them the courtesy of being able to stay while they claim asylum, why do we reward these lawbreakers uh, with what they want, they just want to be able to stay here I think there are three narratives, personally. I think you've got the the uh, accelerationist left who are hoping that by increasing mass migration that society will be destabilised and so they'll vote in their preferred version of government compared to uh, the sort of sense of right government that they believe we have currently. Then there's also the neoliberal angle that I know some of my colleagues at Young Voices, for example, have, or a lot of the Westminster bubble think tanks have, of where they think the holy GDP will be raised by importing a lot of cheap labor, but they have no concerns for the cultural or relationship, neighborliness, integrity of the country that, that stops the society from collapsing in the middle. And then you have the general people who are very much in support of, of refugee intake, who believe in their heart of hearts. It's an incredibly compassionate thing to do to essentially look after the entire world. The problem is they don't have a lot of considerations for the infrastructural limits, because as much as we can have free movement of goods, people are far more complex. They bring in whole histories with them. They, they often bring in family ties. And I can as, as a lot of people, I can appreciate people wanting to make a better life for themselves, but there are limitations on our capacity to care for people. And the problem that you have, actually, by allowing people to skip the queue and come in in mass amounts of numbers and not drip feed themselves and assimilate to the culture, is you're actually doing a disservice to a lot of people who want to become Brits from around the world, who look at our country and think, this is the country that I want to belong to because it has a great set of values. I mean, you need borders to inculcate a culture. That's how a nation forms. It protects a certain amount of values and rights and freedoms. But if a bunch of other people around the world are looking at our country 
culturally transform over time because a lot of people are coming to it well then a lot of prospective immigrants who could really bolster society are looking at britain going well that's no longer the place for me and i've been patient and put in the hard work all my life and now i can't feel i can come here either so it's not only a disservice to the taxpayer it's a disservice to prospective brits all across the world yeah and you see my point you see if a, a, a migrant uh, uh feels that wants to fly from syria to london uh, legally, you know, with a proper ticket and a passport, uh, and then turns up here and say, oh, well, the reason I've come here is I want to live here. Uh, mm. we'll, we'll say, well, well you can't. Uh, you don't have the visa. You don't have uh, the right documents. Uh, no, we can't just let people turn up here and live. Uh, but if they come in illegally and they get caught, you know, uh, using a fake passport, you've been, uh, you've been smuggled over here by people smugglers, or for that matter, by dinghy, uh, then we go, uh, yes, you can stay. Yeah, and it's it's not fair at all, especially when we're looking at the, the Hong Kong citizenry, for example. Uh, I was talking about this a, a while ago to an American radio station because they weren't really sure what was going on. And essentially, I was explaining how we have quite a unique relationship with Hong Kong. And, and a lot of the way that China has subsumed Hong Kong was essentially our fault for giving it back to them in the 90s. It was, it was a pretty bad move on our part. But we're bringing over a lot of Hong Kongers, and I know we're permanently resettling some, but then we're going to allow temporary stay, and then hopefully the situation stabilizes in China. Now, we don't have a lot of faith about that, considering we're taking a very soft stance on China at the moment. But those people who have worked hard all their lives and had their livelihoods and their, and their home country subsumed by a communist tyranny, we're going to leave them, quite a few of them, at their mercy. However, if you're floating over from France, now, I know France is pretty bad, but uh, you haven't really got to risk the dangerous journey from over there. If you're floating over purely to take advantage of the, the UK's infrastructure system, uh, all its healthcare benefits, some of the dwindling job numbers and the economic crisis, despite having loads of neighbouring countries that you pass through that, would, that should have been able to accommodate you along the way, uh, then I don't see how that's fair compared to the treatment of, a, uh, of people from a country that are fleeing a tyranny, that we essentially got them into that mess. Uh, last point, uh, Connor, you know, Brexit, the deal was mm. uh, that would help seal our borders, uh, re uh, regain our sovereignty, uh, sovereign borders uh, across which you shall not cross unless we allow you to. Uh, that's not working, is it? Will we ever manage to seal our borders properly? Well, that's, that was the promise of Brexit, but the problem is the people executing the promise. And we saw for how many years that the uh, Theresa May's government particularly and the rest of the Tory about that just were dragging their feet as to executing on the Brexit promise. Now, Boris got elected in 2019 on the Brexit referendum, but as we said about last week, he also got elected on being a libertarian, and you and I both agree he's got about as many libertarian credentials as most people in the Labour Party at this point. Stalin. So unlikely... he's, about, he's about as a libertarian as Stalin, I think. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's an apt comparison, considering <laughs> they've uh, they've locked up the same amount of people. England has become a gulag island, um, so it's rather ironic that people now want to come here, considering we're being so draconian. Yes, uh, well, uh, this problem will continue uh, and uh, the Home Secretary doesn't seem to be showing too many signs of being able to solve the problem, uh, despite her many, many pronouncements. Uh, uh, all talk and no action. Uh, Connor, uh, let's talk again soon. Always a pleasure.